For example, Boulez first approaches the questions in musical terms in his article Time We Explore, 1976. He presents the concept of a fixed time in relation to a series of stabilizing elements that Wagner inserts from the structure of his music to counteract the almost excessive mobility of all the sections of his rhetoric as this unfolds, with the aim of avoiding a state of instability quite beyond the reach of any listener's attention or memory. He continues, and I quote, once these markers are established, the evolution of the work's time structure will be made clear by their distortion. In other words, these markers or pivots are able to support the structure as well as to absorb around them the excessive amount of musical kinetic energy. By allowing the time structure to distort and pivot around them, introducing a structural pliability to the system. Later on, Deleuze appropriates the Bulesian concept of the fixed in a similar way as he did uh, with the smooth and striated in order to apply it in a wider context, especially on his key essay, Bulesian Prison Time, Occupying Without Counting, in which Deleuze refers clearly to Bulesian music in diagrammatic terms through two key aspects of the fixed, the functions of temporalization and the forces of time, or time itself, as force. Thus, uh, it can be argued that these two deep aspects of the fixed are inextricably linked to the diagram, which is a core concept in Deleuze and Guattari's philosophical effort. In particular, the paper will focus on two of the definitions of the diagram. On one hand, a definition provided in Foucault, in which diagram is explored in its relation to the functions, and on the other hand, a second definition presented in Francis Bacon, The Logic of Sensation, in which the term is related to the forces and their distribution, as well as chaos. According to the first definition, that related to the function, the rule specifies that between the smooth and the striated, there is an alternation and superposition, an exchange between the functions of temporalization. <coughs> Consequently, the communication between the smooth and the striated occurs at the abstracted level of the function, which is, according to Zebi, how Foucault solves the problem of incongruence between two formations. Zebi also points out that the abstract level of intermingling functions is what constituted the, constitutes sorry, the dimension called the diagram. Thus, the question that arises is what or where is the diagrammatic dimension in the system smooth striated, which is made of continuous variation? Where is it? Where is the diagrammatic third space that intermingles functions of temporalization? According to the second definition that related to forces, the loose establishes a link between functions and forces in the less person time. More specifically, he refers to the less music as an attempt to capture the forces of time and render it sonorous, that is to say, perceptible, by developing functions of temporalization that the musician exerts on the sonorous material. In this context, Campbell's analysis offers an insightful perspective, as he states that from a deleuze Guattarian viewpoint, Boulez's post and non-post time are encountered in musical composition as percepts. The percepts of post and non-post time no longer make musical music audible in time, but rather make time audible in music. Thus, in order to relate the fix with the forces and its distribution, it is necessary to find if there is a link between the forces and the time. For this purpose, we'll focus on a different aspect of the loose diagram, as we mentioned above. Um, that is the case of Francis Bacon, The Logic of Sensation, where the loose span widely the concept of the diagram, detached from the abstract approach offered in Foucault. Particularly, he refers to the zone of its indistinguibility within the painter's graphs of diagrams. He refers 
to a chaos, a catastrophe, but also a germ of order or rhythm. Moreover, the diagram remains as a potential generator of different forms. It, remain, it remains pure potentiality, pure flux and becoming. Again, according to Zevi, the diagram seems to cover over a zone and then redistributes traits from one form to another. Or the same form is topologically distorted. The diagram distributes formless forces. Consequently, it could be said that there is a second fundamental aspect on the Lewis diagram that interferes two forces. It could be said that in Boulez person time, the Lewis presents an exchange of functions of temporalization between the smooth and the striated. Then he introduces the fixed as an adjacent phase responsible for the perception of the binary. More specifically, the fixed contributes to a wider perception by rendering perceptible both the variations in the striated milieu and the distributions in the smooth milieu. Moreover, the fixed allows perception through the difference which refers to both smooth and striated. It could be said is the common quality for both smooth and striated. Difference. Furthermore, a wider perception means to render sensible the mute forces that are intertwined with those of time. Finally, the musician renders the forces of time sensible by exerting functions, let's say shaping, uh, shape the forces of time by exerting functions of temporalization on the sonorous material, and as a result, the intermingling functions of temporalization and distributing forces of straight and smooth time help to establish the analogy between the fixed and the diagram. In the second half of this presentation, the paper will engage with the fixed diagram through a series of visual models that hopefully will reveal entwined aspects of it. Let's say that the, uh, the first um, drawing refers to the, that, to the fixed as a stabilizing point. An example of the use of pivots or stabilizing signposts linked uh, to the fixed time can be found in three page entitled Osmosis Polyphonic, in which I have combined different techniques with the aim of materializing the communication between the smooth and the striated. On the left side of the trip page, there's the oroid. Very subtle, actual, uh, very subtle drawing. Right, so on the left part, we find the orbit, which is a geometric object formed by two perpendicular circles. On the right side of the triptych, the figure represented is a cross cap, a geometrical object fundamental in topology related to the modest strip, a surface that has only one side. In the cross cap, I quote a rather than a milogram bridge, the border between the inside and the outside is subverted. Actually, the words inside and outside are no longer in opposition, but rather continuous. The transformation takes place uh, in the central piece of the triptych. The oroids start its process of rotation, overlapping with the rotation of the cross cap. The oroid becomes the cross cap. When I was working on the triptych, a feeling of disorientation invaded me while I was drawing, as I could not perceive with clarity how to continue with the piece, even though the location of geometrical figures was perfectly determined. Everything was perfectly determined, every measure, every point, etc. This disorientation seems to be caused by the complexity and interweaving of the lines and shadowing. However, and this is the point related to the fixed. I could always find an intersection of line, a sort of graphic void that allowed me to continue with the drawing. Analogously, as Boulez himself states, I have certain key markers which enable me to find my way or into the degree. Moreover, these graphic voids could be represented as anchors, pillars, or graphic centers of gravity of the potentially distorted 
time structure. On this image, I'm trying to just basically the negative um, of drawing. This one uh, circle in red, these are the main, let's say, handboards or key points within my drawing, which could be related to the fixed images, at least on this uh, triptych. However, this stabilization represents just one, let's say, functional aspect of the fixed. In addition, the fixed time space would allow the perception of the binary without establishing any identity principle. In order to keep this smooth and striated as such, the fixed preserves at least an infinitesimal amount of difference in the manner of variations and distributions, avoiding their distribution into the same. As a result, the fixed would have a dual nature, or at least a double function or aspect. On one hand, it could act as a stabilizing element by counteracting the excessive density of difference within the system. On the other hand, the fix can operate as a temporal osmotic membrane, which is the title of the next um, drawing. This membrane would maintain the smooth and destroyative adjustment so they can exchange temporal functions without dissolving into each other. On the left side of the drawing, the striated is represented through a progressively folding structure which reaches the membrane of the limit. On the right side, the small space is characterized by circular surfaces interacting by overlapping each other. The diagonal, which embodies the membrane, splits the drawing in two separated areas, symbolizing the asymptote, the element which acts in the drawing without having any entity of it. Could be a casula, a sexual element, maybe. It is the limit of the two space time through which the functions of temporization are filtered. Consequently, it could be said that the fixed could also function as a dynamic controller or temporal governor that regulates the density of difference within the system's smooth striated. Furthermore, it could be argued that the fixed is the assembly or abstract machine that introduces a temporal homeostasis on the smooth striated system. Homeostasis, etymologically, from Greek homeo like and stasis, standing, is defined as the tendency towards a relatively stable equilibrium between interdependent elements. Um, this definition kind of implies that the impossibility of reaching a state of absolute motionlessness or equilibrium. Right? So there's two limit states, let's say, within the system. The two functions of the fixed, the stabilizer and the temporal membrane, are two limit states of the fixed diagram, which, as we said above, act as a regulator sensor or transducer of the density of difference within the system's smooth striated. Furthermore, the fixed organizes sets of the smooth striated. It regulates the index of variation and the index of distribution uh, in the smooth space. When the density of difference either increases or decreases dramatically, the fixed compensates um, this difference in order to level it at a certain point. The drawing temporal governor aims to embody the self-regulating dimension of the fixed by representing a topographic map of possible intensities of the variations and distributions of the smooth striated. The map is embedded in the structure of a centrifugal governor which is basically a device consisting of two weights attached to a rotating spindle. Um, this device is frequently used in engines, for example, to regulate the speed or the amount of moments of inertia. The fixed, as an interchanger of functions of temporization and distributor of formless forces, is even more elusive than the binary smooth striated as it relates to a dimension with multi-gravitational centers, points, voids, or in the last words, envelopes. These centers 
trace a synaptic mesh on the embedded map throughout the smooth strain of the system. The synaptic mesh, as we mentioned, will generate envelopes around the most dense areas of density. More importantly, it could be said that the fixed function as a sort of dark precursor, or I would say reverse dark precursor. More specifically, when the polarization between index of distribution in the smooth milieu and the index of variation is strong enough, the fixed triggers are discharged in order to compensate this density difference. In an attempt to capture this process, the governor's shape is deformed depending on the variation in the smooth straight system. As it was mentioned before, the device would have two living states. On one hand, a minimum amount of fixed, too much density of difference near the brain, which would be on um, this diagram. On the bottom right, right, but um, let's say temporal dominance is the form to the point in which the fixed, the amount of fixed is near zero. Um, I try to explain very quickly this uh, diagram about the system is more straight and fixed. We have two areas, smooth, straight, left and right. Right in the middle, there's the fixed area. On top, there's a maximum amount of fixed, let's say. So the, let's say, inertia uh, is at the minimum point between the smooth straight. And then on the bottom, there's nearly zero amount of fixed. This would mean that the system, that the smooth straight system, is nearly to break. There's no amount of this glue in between the smooth and straight. So I think, um, well, I think you know, that's what the uh, diagram represents. That would represent the break point, the limit state of breaking point between the smooth and the striated. There's too much amount of there's too much density of difference on the on the bottom of the diagram. So it would mean that if the system is not regulated, it's near the brain. So as explained, again, very important. On one hand, minimum amount of fix, and on the other hand, a maximum amount of fix. Uh, two small difference between them, possible fusion into the same. Finally, regarding Bacon's uh, diagram, the zone of indestinability, the blur embodied by the surface, encloses and contains the potential of the diagram. Furthermore, the role of translucency appears to be fundamental as it allows to generate an increasingly denser, richer, multiple and multidirectional diagram. The opacity of the surface is an index of the density of difference. The dark region, constituted by the limit of all overlap translucent layers of temporal possibilities, would condense the maximum density or potential of the diagram. That is the fifth and the last model I presented in relation to the fixed. This fully potential diagram is, in other words, the house. House of this drawing, entitled Translucent House, deals with translucency and overlapping in order to construct the diagram as a zone of indestinability. House, with this pronunciation, um, from ancient Greek, refers to the original meaning as a chasm, gap or abyss, rather than disorder. Moreover, it is not the absence of events, it is not the void, it is rather the opposite. In this sense, Predotti refers to the loose chaos as the virtual formation of four possible forms. The generative force of chaos is the source of its vital elemental powers of renewal and transformation. This abyss corresponds to the area with more legs of time, either smooth or striating. Consequently, the abyss, embodied by, by the maximum density of difference through the limit of translucency, 
is the sum of indestinability through which the functions are exchanged and the forces are distributed. The concept of translucency is positioned halfway between transparency and opacity, and at the same time, in opposition to them, it conveys a dynamic dimension of the diagram, as it allows grades of density as well as in its intensity. Moreover, according to Wittgenstein, on his work Remarks on Color, transparency painted in a picture produces an its effect in a different way than opaqueness. For red or yellow, transparent things are not cloudy. White is cloudy. Accordingly, the fixed diagram would infer translucence and not transparency, gradients of significance, force fields within the drawing. Moreover, the diagram, depending on its fluxual density, could generate a scenario of multiple nonlinear and cross timelines through its sum of invisibility. More significantly, thanks to translucency, the drawing could be read in two different ways. On one hand, the drawing could be perceived as a whole, as a totality of all its, its constitutive layers. On the other hand, the different temporal layers can be perceived independently. Finally, unlike the privileged role that the line holds in the lowest thinking, especially related to Claire's fault, in which the line acts as a diagrammatic element on the horizon through its inflections. The model presented here privileges the surface as the key visual element, as the line is just regarded as a connector or boundary that rivets the surface. Consequently, I would argue that the translucency could be understood, uh, understood sorry, as a generative force of multiplicity. To conclude, the five visual models of the fixed diagram presented pivot osmo osmotic membrane, dark precursor, temporal governor, and house aim to engage with different entwined aspects of the fixed diagram, which could be conceived as a gateway through which the artist and the viewer step into the alterity of the chaotic forces of time, interpreting the oscillating reading of the diagram. They both may identify the formless forces of the surface and the blur, and the striated smooth becoming process that intersect and overlap, expanding and contracting, and crystallizing and melting. They can finally perceive embedded in the visual or musical work of art the palpitating flux of their becoming. Thank you. Presentation is the, the gap 
the cows and the great conservation of the cows and the um, armies instead of disorder. Uh, 
And I think they'll kind of um, saying that they it's more as an expansive. It's an expansive in this situation, because there's a whole lot of things which any gender experience is, because it's a human being. I think it would be engaged um, differently, just like using just a kind of for example, just a surface, maybe, instead of a line, which can be closer to its face. I'm sorry, I didn't have to confuse with the concept. The seven o'clock is that the concept of the way 